That leaves us the big score. What is that? 20% chance that... There is 20% chance that you're gonna get the big score or special guests, right? Instead of a common. Instead of a common. So 20% chance you're gonna get something here. Which is not small, like, right? You, you open uh, more than... Like in two drafts you're open, gonna open more, more, more than one. At least one. You're gonna open at least one, something like that. In two drafts you're gonna see them. Special guest, it's 1.4, okay. All right, Collector's Cage. Uh, for These are all new cards now. All of them are new, if I'm Actually, you don't need, you need you don't need to take a break. I need to make I need to make coffee for my throat. You need to make and coffee? To okay, make I'm going to get some water. All right, guys, uh, two-minute break. Going to run an ad, and we are... I cannot run an ad uh, for some reason. Why can't you run an ad? Oh, because did, did an ad just happen? Hmm. Yeah, let's... How about, like, uh, we go through a few cards... So we can time the ad, so it's not when we have a set review. All right, is that okay? Like, that's yeah, fine. A few minutes. Collector's okay. cage for one and white. It's an artifact that says Hideaway Five. Hideaway Five is uh, look at top five cards uh, of your library and choose one. It, it, does it have to be a creature? I forgot. It no, can be it can be anything. It can be anything. Okay. Uh, for so you choose one. For one and a tap, you put a plus one plus one counter on target creature you control. Then if you control three or more creatures with different powers, you may play the exiled card without paying its mana costs. This is amazing. Uh, <laughs> it makes combat a nightmare. With this effect, it's not very hard to have different powers. Um, yeah, this is pretty easy. And then you're gonna play that card for free. This is really good. Mm. I'm, I want to start it as a B plus. What do you think? I think this is a bomb. I think it's an A minus. Yeah. Um, only a... a minus based on the conditionality that you need a creature, a creature like creatures, like a creature, even like a one one for like two mana. <laughs> you know, like it's really strong. Yeah, I'm gonna start as a B plus, but could could go to an A minus. It's it's amazing. Grand Abolisher, white, white, for a creature, human cleric. It's a 2 2. During your turn, your opponents can't cast spells or activate abilities of artifact, creatures, or enchantments. Uh, you know, yeah, you can dream and hose the uh, blue white deck that's trying to flash stuff in, in on your turn, but they could also just play those cards on their turn. Um, instance can also be played on main phase. Uh, I think this is a. I. I legitimately think this is like a D minus because it's a difficult to cast bear. But it's such a powerful effect. Wait, a D minus, like a bad D minus? D like dog yeah, shit? Yeah, like a bad D minus. Oh man, but this effect is incredibly powerful. It is hard to cast. I can, I can, I can be sold on a D. I don't actually think it's that that powerful. They can like, it, it hoses tricks. It hoses tricks. It's, it's, it's not that. I don't think it actually hoses anything else. It doesn't hose tricks. They can use it on the, the ocean, but your turns are going to be perfect. Sure. That's the thing. Like you this have feels this. like a very, very uh, cozy card. Like telepathy. It it hoses that you don't have to play around a single thing, right? You it, you have perfect turns. Yeah, which you usually do anyway because you're good at magic. Oh. Uh, no, I'm gonna see because I'm gonna see. It's it's a very powerful effect. It's incredible. It's not worth the difficult to castness. Like no spells can be cast, no abilities used, no instant speed removal. Uh, no, your tricks are gonna be perfect. No, I was not joking. It's uh. By the way, be careful what Unreal Mistake is saying. His name is true. It's so true. The set is sometimes two months old, and he's <laughs> he has the, the things. So talking about the things that are uh, like the set came is coming in one week. So be careful about it. Talks a lot of things with confidence. This is a very very powerful effect. It's like uh, you remember. I like in, defend. <laughs> where did we have the three three that doesn't use uh, that mean you, your opponents cannot cast spells um, on your turn? Where was that? Gosh. Wild of Eldrin? The Celestia one. Celestia was bad there, but that was a good card. It's easy to forget how powerful a perfect turn is, which means like opponent is basically always playing like a tapped out mana. That is very easy 
to understate. The problem is this is a tutu and it trades with literally anything. But having perfect turns, your turn, everything you envision is gonna happen. Like sometimes you gotta play like that to win, right? You're like, okay, I'm not gonna play around anything here. And then you win because of it. This time it's like always gonna be that. So, see, it's fine. Sucks that it's a 2 2. One more card, then we go. Uh, sure. Can you run an ad now? Um, I'll take Mana Weaver, uh, two and a white for a creature human artificer. It's a 2 4. Whenever you cast a creature spell, choose one. Create a 1 1 colorless gnome artifact creature token, or create a token that's a copy of target artifact token you control. <laughs> uh, I will read this as 99%, 99.9% of the time is whenever you play a creature, you get an additional 1 1. Yeah. It's a good card. That's a pretty good card. That's solid. You know, and uh, three mana, two, four, not very good, but the effect is strong. Um, I think overall, this is like a B minus for me. It's a good card. Okay, I think it's incredible. Just incredible. Like, <laughs> yeah. Uh, after you play this, every one of your creatures is in is like a B or a B plus. Like after you play this, every creature that you have is B or B plus. Yeah, it's pretty dang good. Like D, D creatures that are D, D plus or D, like filler. They become B or B plus, not even a B minus. Yeah, every single time you play a creature after that. So yeah. like in your hand, you're going to drop like three creatures, get like three one ones if this doesn't get removed. It's pretty strong. So I'm on a at least B for this one. I'll go B. This is like, that, that's I think how it should be, lo uh, how we should look at it. At it. It's uh, like literally every creature becomes that you have play after this it becomes one of the best creatures for its mana cost in in the set okay yeah incredible incredible uh, i can see it being even better also works well with plot oh yeah i mean well you plot something well, why, and why is this, this particularly better with plot it, it, wor it works well with plot. I mean, it's not like you're always going to be plotting, but you can plot something, then play this, and then cast it. And it's going to get a 1-1 one, one even if, if this gets removed. Yeah, but, like, this is on... Like, plot on 2 specifically, which is, like, very narrow, right? I mean, it's not only that. Like, sometimes you're going to plot for 4, draw this card, and then play it. Sure, okay. Yeah, fair Or enough. play a different 3-drop, and then plot on 4, and play something else, so... Yeah, man, this is nice. This is really nice. These, these cards are pretty good. I think you're more right about Hearst than I was. I thought about it. I, I cleared my brain while letting go of my uh, my human waste. Um, but yeah, it's the fact that you can't grow it immediately. It's almost never going to grow immediately when you when you throw it down. It's, it's pretty bad. It's, it's, it's really rough. I think that's like the main drawback. I do think that the synergies are pretty decent. Um, I'm going to be a C minus. Oh, on a, on a hearse? Yep. You had your t the time to think on the bathroom? Mm-hmm. Yep. Okay. Came to my senses. Well, on to the last couple of cards. Rest in peace for one and white. It's an enchantment. When it enters the battlefield, exile all gra graveyards. If a card or token will be put into a graveyard from anywhere, exile it instead. F. Don't play this. F. Uh, esoteric Duplicator. Two blue for an artifact clue. Whenever you sacrifice Esoteric Duplicator or another artifact, you may pay two. If you do, at the beginning of your next end step, create a token that's a copy of that artifact. And two, to sacrifice Esoteric Duplicator, draw a card. <clears throat> um, you could read this as a three mana thing that then has a pay four to draw a card. Um, <laughs> loops with mind slaver. <laughs> yeah, we're, loops with mind slaver, which is actually hilarious. Uh, it can work the treasures, am I right? It works with treasures. Yeah, it just um just just get a treasure back or whatever. If you somehow pay mana for treasure and then need another treasure and you have a leftover mana, makes no sense. It'll never work with treasures. It makes no sense. Um, yeah. yeah, it makes zero sense. <laughs> um, but I think this card is too slow, and I there's no sin. There's this is not an artifact set. Well. Let's re let's say that again. Big the big score has an artifact theme throughout it, but Outlaws of Thunder Junction is not an artifact set. It's yeah, not. it doesn't have it. And you have to sacrifice it. It's not one 
an artifact dies. So it's not like you can like tussle your scarecrows in combat and get something out of it. You have to sack it. Um, so this is a whack. Um, I think this is way too slow. I think this is a D minus. It is unplayable. It's like three mana to do nothing, then four mana to keep drawing cards. Yeah, you, seven mana to draw one card. Yeah. Heck yeah. Unplayable. F. Fine, this this is an F. doesn't. That's okay. You don't play this. Then you don't play this. <laughs> you just don't. Uh, Simulacrum Synthesizer for two and a blue. Uh, when Simulacrum Synthesizer enters the battlefield, scry two. Whenever another artifact with mana value 3 or greater enters the battlefield under your control, create a 0 0 colorless construct artifact creature token with this creature gets plus 1 plus 1 for each artifact you control. Okay, I mean, there's some things that you can do in this set, right? There are some common artifacts, but I don't think you want to be making it because of this. This is a very, very powerful effect. If this was in LCI, this would be very powerful. But it's not. Uh, doesn't count itself. I think you just never play this. I'm gonna give it a D minus. Maybe you somehow end up with a lot of artifacts in your deck. There are commons. But basically never you play this. It's, it's, most of the time it's just gonna be a scry too that you wait a ton of time to finally do something else and yeah, not not great. I'll give this an F. An F? I think this is this is I think this just never play. It is bad. It is really bad. Yeah, give it an F for me as well. You just don't play it. Even in that perfect deck, you don't want to be playing those three mana artifacts plus uh don't want to be playing many of those. That's true. World Waker Helm, two blue, three mana total for an artifact. If you would create one or more artifacts tokens, instead create those tokens plus an additional map token. Uh, and you can pay one in a blue to create a token that's a copy of target artifact token you control. So if you get your first map token, the joke here is that you can then pay two mana and just generate a lot more. A oh, World Walker. It is World Walker. <laughs> I want to say World Waker. Um, but um, yeah, you can just generate continuous map tokens. But getting that first, getting that first artifact is treasure because it's only treasures. It's only treasures. It's only treasures in this set. And yeah. there's there's actually there's actually a fair amount of things with treasures, but I think this is too expensive. I think this one's a legitimate D minus. I understand that the effect is relatively powerful though, in terms of um it's not that expensive once it gets rolling. Like four, like three mono a turn, right? To like start mapping things all over the place, which is like kind of flexible, but eh. I'm kind of off it. I think this is a D minus. So in blue it's you too, don't it's make a lot treasures. of hoops. In red, you it have like one or two color. cards that make treasures. In green, you have an inconsistent treasure maker. In black, you have one and a half cards that make treasures. Like, it's 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 three mana. Once it gets going, it, it, it does cost so much, though. So, I mean, you can make like two map tokens per turn for two mana, and then you sack them for one. I'm on a D- minus as well. Yeah, this is really bad. <laughs> this is really bad. Uh, man, a lot of these are bad. Greed's Gambit for 3 and a black enchantment. When this thing enters the battlefield, you draw 3 cards, gain 6 life, and create 3 2 1 black bet creature tokens with flying. At the beginning of your end step, you discard a card, lose 2 life, and sacrifice a creature. And when this leaves the battlefield, you discard 3 cards, lose 6 life, and sacrifice 3 creatures. If you. If they kill this enchantment, man, that's. If they kill this enchantment, it's end step, right? So wait, you drew three cards, you discard a card, you lose two life, and you sacrifice a creature. Oh! You give this enchantment to the opponent? Oh my god. Yeah, it, it actually works with shifting grift. Oh my god, that is... That's GG. But how good is it if you don't have that in your hand? So you're making 3 two, one flyers, that's a lot. And you sack something else. You gained 4 life that turn. Next turn you gain 2 life and then you're even. You kinda need to finish the game very quickly. You cannot sacrifice it. Or bounce it. Oh my god, they, they can also bounce it. <laughs> oh, they can also bounce this. Is this horrible? I'm on a D minus. How many how many Nazumi line breakers do you want? 
What is that? Like you're you're hitting kind of hard if you have other things to sacrifice besides the bats. Yeah, you get three two ones. That's like pretty big board impact. Wait, why do you have to be blue black? Uh, so you can give them something. I don't know. I think it might be even better in Rakdos. I don't know. I mean, that is a pretty good. Yeah, something hyper aggressive. With this as the top end. I assume you line breakers that you can sacrifice. I mean, you get to draw your switcheroo faster, if you have that. You can end the game as well with the 2-1 flyers, but what if they have a flyer? <laughs> what if they have a bounce or inside? Do you want to give this to a ceiling? Huh? Do you want to give this a ceiling? A ceiling of uh, C+. I was going to say C. <laughs> C? Okay, ceiling of a C. I'm okay with that. Oh, don't don't bounce this yourself. Don't 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 bounce this yourself. That will not end well for you. No, no, no. You do not bounce this. Don't bounce this. Don't bounce this. Don't bounce oh, don't this. bounce it yourself. <laughs> or bounce it and clip it. Uh, bounce it and record it and send it uh, to us so we can have a good time. Do not bounce this. <laughs> Opponent can bounce it though. Oh man, it's so scary when you I'm play. I'm taking this. it as like a D. I'm I'm taking it as a D minus. Okay. Yep. Harvester of Misery, uh, three black black, five mana total for a creature spirit. It's a five four with menace. When Harvester of Misery enters the battlefield, other creatures get minus two minus two until end of turn. One and a black. Discard Harvester of Misery. Target creature gets minus two minus two until end of turn. What a beautiful bailout mode mm -hmm. for like a honestly pretty good creature. Mm -hmm. um, this is very strong. This is really strong all around. A five four with menace for five mana. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. A okay. five four that wipes opponents like stuff, and you can actually sort of manipulate your board to play around that great and it even has a bailout mode i think this card is extremely strong it's an a minus for me a wait this is a bomb for you man this is a bomb for me it's super flexible it's incredible i think you've been hurt by the last couple of cards that were garbage that's a bomb this card is su like this card is like never dead either well, okay what if it doesn't have a minus two minus two what is it what, what is it then which minus two minus two uh the, sorry the <laughs> the this card uh, if it doesn't have the discard, then it's a B for me. Your creatures also get minus two, minus two, right? Yes, it also wipes your creatures, but you'll know it's coming. <laughs> I don't think this is ever a bomb. It's going to be a bomb in such small amount of games that are then, then like so many D cards are bombs. In, the, in some games, like you just win because of a D level card. Uh, I think it's a great, great card. But it is an effect that targets that that is symmetrical. So sure, you know that it's coming. Um, and black has like these two power flyer that is good, common three one for three. Black kind of does, everything is smaller in black. It's opposite from real world. So like you have you have three ones, two twos for two, three, four mana. And you have 1-1 one, one mercenaries. Like, I think this is not that good in black. You're not going to really manipulate the board that well. But maybe you have creatures in other colors. Uh, I'm going to be plus still. Like it, it's, it's also... I'm going to be. Just to be. It also... This minus 2, minus 2 for 2 mana is really nice. Like That's okay effect. Uh, if you need that. Instant speed at any point. Bomb? What the fuck, man? Hostel Investigates. I think we have fundamentally different definitions of a bomb. <laughs> yeah, I don't think we do. We agree on everything, so this is a bomb for you. Uh, it's not that good as an A-, minus. yeah. Uh, come on, come on, come on. What do you mean I don't like this? No, it's low, low. B. B is, low, low. <laughs> B is an incredible card. B is like crazy powerful. <laughs> Hostel Investigator for 3 and a black. It's a rogue. And it's a 4-3. When it enters the battlefield, target opponent discards a card, okay? When never one or more players discard one or more cards, investigate. This ability triggers only once each turn. Oh, this is really good. 4 mana, 4, 3, rogue, commits a crime. They discard a card, you, you draw a card later. Amazing. B+, plus, B+, plus, B+, plus. very, very good. This is like a 3 for 1 a lot of times. I think this is an A-. minus. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, th I think that these cards are just phenomenal. They're just incredibly Scotty good. Scotty, who doesn't want to give A-plus to a Draco, sorry. Just, just so you know, guys. 
<laughs> Dracosaur sucks. Yeah. <laughs> Dracosaur is like a like a, oh, like a, you like went, like a bee. What happened on the bathroom? What happened? What 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 happened? <laughs> What happened is I came to my senses about uh, unlicensed herbs. Why are you looking down? You came to your senses, why did you look down like that? I looked down because my, my headphone fell out. Okay. But that's very funny. I th I said I'd stop doing that. I'm so self-conscious now. You just do things, man. Chill out. This is a good place. Generous Plunderer. One red. For a creature, human rogue, it's a 2-2 with menace. At the beginning of your upkeep, you may pay... Uh, you may create a treasure token when you do target opponent creates a tapped treasure token whenever generous plunder attacks it deals damage to defending player equal to the number of artifacts they control this one's very interesting um at minimum at worst it's a two mana two two menace which is very good so at like at its worst this is a super strong two drop like already like b minus level um i want to talk about how good the ability is and i think it's also merits when to use it like when to use it because you don't necessarily want to be using this all the time. But I'm currently in the opinion that if you can spend the mana immediately, I would just use it that turn. Right? Like, without without fail. If I have a 4 drop to cast, I'm just doing it immediately. And attacking. And dealing 3 damage. Um, are you? Do you feel like that's the same thing? The you? thing is, like, they're always going to be sacrificing. They, they kind of really, really want to sacrifice the treasure on their turn. Right? Or at any point. Yeah. So... They need to, it's like one damage is going to deal to something, but they might have other artifacts as well. I think this is a B. I am on a B minus. This is really good, but um, okay. maybe it should be a B. B minus for now. Like that one damage targets a lot of things. Okay, B. B seems fine. That's a, that's a two drop, man. <laughs> yeah, this is really good. And they cannot... What do you mean that one damage targets a lot of things? What and they can't about? really bank the treasures, right? Can you? This doesn't hit creatures. You know that, right? Yeah, 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 man. Blah 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 blah. <laughs> yeah, <man. laughs> it doesn't. Yeah, it might. It might not. <laughs> it might not hit. Might creatures. not do that. <laughs> Okay, B minus. It's a good card. It's a very good card. Okay. B minus. Okay. It doesn't. Did you know that, guys? I just <laughs> learned it just now. Legion Extruder. For one and a red. An artifact. Uh, when Legion Extruder enters the battlefield, it deals two damage to any target. Okay. For two and a tap and sacrifice another artifact, create a 3 3. That's pretty good. You just sack treasures when you have them? Yeah, you just turn your treasures into 3-3s. Three we need a ceiling for this, don't we? Uh, ceiling... A B... A B? I think ceiling B is fine, yeah. And I take it as a C plus, I think. Maybe C? C plus. Okay. I'll take it as a C plus. I'm taking it as a C plus as well. It's good. It's good. This, this card this card is good you can also um if you have the mana open and your opponent tries to point a removal spell or tries to use a combat trick to beat your 3-3 in combat you, oh. you can sacrifice the golems themselves so that's pretty strong pretty dang good yeah you can sacrifice the golems as well for if if they kill them or something use a trick memory it's vessel so good. Three, oh, it's so red, good. Red. yeah 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 uh, what under the mistakes said so good with a black 2-2 that makes a treasure for one mana yeah, that's that's very. Oh, strong. that's so good. That's <laughs> my, oh, that's really good. <laughs> okay, might be taking it higher. Memory vessel, three red red, five mana for an artifact. Exile memory vessel. Um, each player exiles the top seven cards of their library until your next turn. Players may play cards that they exiled this way, and they can't play cards from their hand. Activate only as a sorcery. This is an F. F. Yeah, don't play. So much mana for you both get it. Bye bye. These symmetrical effects are you, uh, a lot of times very very bad. Because opponent didn't pay anything. They didn't pay fucking five mana. <laughs> they didn't pay five mana for that effect. What the hell? Molten. Uh, wait. Wait 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 wait. Activate only as a sorcery. Oh my god. I stopped like I stopped even reading it at one point because it's so bad. Jesus. It mills seven. Yes it does. 
Uh, molten duplication. For one and a red uh, sorcery, create a token that's a copy of target artifact or creature you control. Except it's an artifact in addition to its other types. Okay. It gains haste until end of turn and then sacrifice it at the beginning of the next turn step. Wait. What? <laughs> okay, this is an F. You don't play it. What? Wait. Just dies? That's yeah, another F. Okay, just wait. Dies. What happened? Yep. Okay, F. Wait, you're making like paying two mana to make a creature for one turn? That, that's it, right? No that's one it. has had even. No. No one had seen this, this side of the flame before. Not, well, I'm, I don't know, man. What the hell is that? <laughs> that's so bad. Territory Forge, four and a red. For an artifact, when Territory Forge enters the battlefield, if you cast an exile target artifact or land, Territory Forge has all activated abilities of the exiled card, which includes the basic land that you do exile. So you can tap it. You five mana, tap for one mana. This is an F. <laughs> F. A lot of Fs on this thing. You're not going to see them much, so that's kind of cool. Ancient Cornucopia. What is Cornucopia? A cornucopia is like a basket with like stuff in it or, you know, right? Yeah, okay. Cornucopia. I'm I'm, I'm looking it up. Cornucopia. For two and a green? It's um It's a mana rock. You it's can It's a horn. It's a horn of abundance. A hor what is it? It's like it's like it's like the basket in the shape basket of, a of horn, abundance, okay. But it has like stuff in it. All right. Add one mana of any color for a tap, and whenever you cast a spell that's one or more colors, you may gain Lie one life for each of that spell's colors. Do this only once per turn. So you're gaining like one up to two life most of, uh, when you do this. One up to two life. I mean, this gains you a good amount of life. I mean, that's not. This is not bad. I mean, it's a mana rock. I don't like mana rocks, but it is gonna gain you some life. I mean, it's a good mana rock, I think, which is a, like a D plus, because you have the tumbleweed, right? For fixing. You have a card that can actually make a huge creature later on. A D plus, I mean, if you really need fixing, this is fine. Yeah, D plus seems good for me too. Um one one major issue with uh with uh mono rocks is that you usually fall behind in tempo because you're spending three mana to not affect the board. Uh you catch up a little bit with that by gaining a mono advantage oh. in as as the game goes on by casting five drops and stuff, but it's usually not enough on its own. Which is why the additional life helps a ton with this. Um, so, a D plus. Uh, Bristlebud Farmer, two green green, four mana for a creature plant druid. It's a 5 5 with trample. When Bristlebud Farmer enters the battlefield, create two food tokens. Whenever Bristlebud Farmer attacks, you may sacrifice a food. If you do, mill three cards. You may put a permanent card from among them into your hand. So, this is a four mana 5 5 with trample. You're getting immediate value in food tokens. And then when you attack, you draw cards. That's pretty wild. There's no other ways to generate food in this set. So um, it's not like you can get anything beyond two foods, I believe. Uh, but this card is strong. This card is big and strong and uh, gets a lot of pretty dang value. And I'd love to buy it back. This is an A- minus for me. Cacti are very strong in this set. <laughs> Every cactus yeah. is good. So four mana, five, five, two food. That's like the worst thing. And then it also draws you cards. What do you give it? An A minus. A minus? I'm okay with A minus here. Yep. This is great. This is so good. Wow, so much for four mana. Omen Pet Journey. For three and a green. Enchantment. When it enters the battlefield, search your library for up to five land cards that have different names, exile them, then shuffle. At the beginning of your end step, choose a card at random, exiled with this thing, and put it onto the battlefield tapped. I mean, that's a lot of lands. <laughs> Uh, okay, we've never had something like this, I think. This is really a lot of lands. This is actually not unplayable. Usually we have unplayable things here. So it gets you one right away, then the second one next. D minus. I think it's better than two deserts. I mean, D minus, because maybe there's going to be that deck where, where you want it. And it really does filter your deck. I think this is not unplayable, but... 90, in most decks, you're not gonna play it. I mean, it's a random thing, so mm. you might you, you might be waiting for what you really want. D minus or an F, man. I hate this actually. <laughs> the more I, I think, think about it, I think it's an F. Huh? I think it's an F. <laughs> yeah, it is an F. It is an F. It is an F. 
<laughs> I'm I'm very concerned with even getting five lands to search up in the first place. Yeah, you're probably not getting five. Yeah, okay. that's that's tough. You you ha you have you have a soup, and at that point, you're not you don't care about it. The, the the Omen Path Journey gamer does not care about a tier list. <laughs> 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 They've transcended the tier list at that point. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. All right, next. Sandstorm Salvager. Two and a green for three mana for a creature, human artificer. It's a 1-1. One, one. When Sandstorm Salvager enters the battlefield, create a 3-3 three, three colorless golem artifact creature token. Uh, two, and tap it to put a plus one, plus one counter on each creature token you control. They gain trample until end of turn. This card is really good. Like, this is a 3 mana, 4 4 worths of stats. One of them is a 3 3, which can tussle in combat. And if they tussle with the 3 3, this 1 1 is still a legitimate threat with mercenary tokens. Like, still a pretty legitimate threat. Um, and of course, the obvious synergy of the if this survives, you can start growing your golem. You know, this, this is just tokens, really good. Yeah. This, yeah, this is a B plus for me. This is super strong. Yeah, this is incredible. Like, just the one one that makes a 3 3 is very, very powerful. And it can also grow the 3 3, and it can also grow the mercenaries. Um, I kind of want to give it an A minus, man. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Uh, let's start it as a high B plus, but I think it's going to go to an A minus. Man, this, like, we have so many of this big score garbage, but then green. Is great. Then <laughs> every green card comes, almost every green card, and it's like, yeah. Vault Born Tyrant, for example, this one. Vault Born Tyrant for five and double green. It's a six six trample, not good, but when this thing or another creature with power four or greater enters the battlefield under your control, you gain three life and draw a card. And when it dies, if it's not a token, you create a token that's a copy of it. Except it's an artifact, in addition to its other types. So, you play a 7 mana, 6 is gain 3 life, draw a card. Every other 4 power creature is gonna gain you 3 life, draw a card. And when this dies, it's gonna make a 6-6 six, six that gains you 3 life and draws a card. So on its own, this is kind of like 4-4-1. Four, four, and you're gaining life as well. And it's gonna be much better probably, because they gotta kill it right away, hopefully. If they exile it, okay, whew, they're like, whew. And if you play any other four power creature, okay, that's crazy. Uh, it's a seven drop, so I'm just giving it an A. A sounds good to me. This card is ridiculous. Um, ridiculous. ridiculous. And, and we're even giving it the we're even giving it the seven mana tax. Sorry, what? We're even we're even giving it the seven mana tax, so it's like lower grade than yeah, than not an A plus. It's the... Seven mana tax. Yeah, it's, it's wild. But gain life is huge. Yeah, the game life is everything, huh? And being in green is really nice too. Loot, the key to everything. Well, I mean, I mean that because you can ramp in green mm -hmm. easily. Um, but loot, the key to everything: green, blue, red, three mana total for a legendary creature, beast, noble. It's a one two with ward one. At the beginning of your upkeep, exile the top X cards of your library, where X is the number of card types among other non-land permanents you control. You may play those cards this turn. Um, this is very weirdly reminiscent of Fibblethip. Is Fibblethip just loot in disguise? Huh. Is Fibblethip what? Is Fibblethip just loot in disguise? They're both like three mana garbage bodied ward things, right? <laughs> that like play cards off the top of your deck. Um, yeah, yikes. Uh, this is three colors. Eh, it's three colors. I'm not super into this. I'm not. I'm not super duper into this as like Same. just a slow card advantage engine. This is like a D minus for me. Nope. Yeah, for me it's like a D. It is so small. It's three colors is what kills it, right? And uh, yeah. At, at that at that point when you finally cast it, like there's you you can even mill yourself. You gotta play them this turn. It's three different mana for for kind of do nothing when it, when it enters the battlefield and then car, just card advantage and ca pretty slow card advantage as well. Yeah, just D, D, D is fine. It's gonna have a bad win rate. <laughs> Pest control for white and black. Destroy all, no sorcery, destroy all non-land permanents with mana value one or less, cycling two. Oh, that's just an F. 
Not even a sideboard. Like, you basically never get a sin. One or less is to two, two, even with mercenary tokens. F sounds great. Lost Gite, one mana for a legendary artifact equipment. Uh, whenever a equipped creature deals combat damage, put a charge counter on Lost Gite. Remove a charge counter from Lost Gite, choose one, untapped, target land. Target creature can't block this turn. Put a plus one, plus one counter on equipped creature. Equip one. Um, yeah, so one of the a callback to one of the greatest limited cards of mm -hmm. all time. And this one is not that. It's not that. It is <laughs> it's, not. It's not that. It's not that. No. that. It's, it's, it's so much worse. It's so bad. Uh, I, I don't, actually don't think this card is um, particularly great. So let's see. Uh, one mana, one mana that's equipped. You can get that mana back immediately by untapping. Uh, actually, we should point out for, the, for this card, it doesn't, it's not combat damage to player. It's combat damage. It's combat damage, period. So if you if you if you put on a creature in the trade, you're still getting the counter, and the counter remains on GTA. It remains on GTA, so you can transfer this to another creature and then still use the effect. In fact, you can use the effect even without being equipped to a creature. Uh, you can have your GTA with two counters on it, be unequipped, and still untap lands, because it's just an ability that GTA has. It doesn't have to be equipped to do yeah. something. Um, it's so much worse than GTA, and it's... still it's okay. Like it's, it, I think this card's okay, uh, especially being colorless, fitting into basically every deck. Only one mana. Um, it's super cheap to equip and move around. Uh, you don't have to use the charge counters unless you need it. So you have threat of activation if you stocked up like three counters and you attack with a two two into your opponent's like four four. They can't really block it, right? So you're just accumulating more counters that way, which is kind of nice. Um, I like it. I, I think this is a solid card. I'm gonna give it a B. A B? That's high. I mean, you're a really uh, reminiscent of uh, Umezawazite. That thing also yeah, because it's so much worse. two charge counters and had better effects. Oh, it had so much better effects. G GTA was incredible. This card and is And it's fine. two charge counters. Like, if this gained two charge counters, it would be broken. But this is also one man and equip one. So, I mean, it's pretty good. Like, untap, you can ramp. Maybe get in. Plus one, plus one. You put it somewhere, then move it somewhere else, I guess. You can move it to a blocker. One is kind of easy. I mean, it's pretty good. I'm gonna give it a C plus, but the first effect, I mean, the effects are not very powerful. Um, if you put it on the double striker in white, that, that's, that's, that's nice. All right, just uh, C plus. It's okay. Lotus ring for three. Artifact equipment, it's indestructible. Equipped creature gets plus three, plus three and has vigilance. And tap, sacrifice this creature at 3 mana of any color. Equip 3. Oh, it is shit. Uh, yeah, okay. So you, <laughs> you can sacrifice, make a creature into, into a black lotus. <laughs> but that creature is huge. And you just paid 6 mana to make it huge. I don't think you want to be sacrificing it. So it's just like 3 mana plus 3 plus 3 vigilance. Vigilance is kind of okay on this. Usually we don't have Vigilance here. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Vigilance is kind of good here. Because usually it's like plus three, plus three, attack, and then you can't really move it around because it costs too much. This is more playable than it looks. Gonna give it like a D plus. It can be your top end. Vigilance is big, big, big. Vigilance and large creatures have inherent synergy with one another. Yeah. Um, in terms of how they play out. And a lot to equip. Play. Yep. Lifelink in this yeah, set. So it's true. So there's a there's a lot of cards that could it could it could pair with. I'll go up to D plus. I was gonna be on a D, but um yeah, there, there's, D there's a lot of good keywords that there's just fits on. It's not a very good card. <laughs> Obviously. Did you go down to D minus? I wanted to go to D minus, but I think it's a D plus. Okay, in I'll right be D plus deck. two. Nexus of Becoming, six mana artifact. At the beginning of combat on your turn, draw a card. Then you may exile an artifact or a creature card from your hand. If you do, create a token that's a copy of the exiled card, except it's a 3-3 golem creature in addition to its other types. This is very interesting. Okay. Um, six mana card advantage engine is usually pretty bad. Really bad, really, really bad. This sort of, 
yeah, extremely bad. But this actually uh, catches you up on board inherently by the exile clause. Like sometimes, yeah, you will be losing on a value, but I could totally see like exiling a natural 4-4 four four or something from your hand just because you need to just put more stuff on the battlefield. <clears throat> yeah. It impacts the board so, right away a lot of times. Yeah, it's, it's, it's nice. It's actually, I think this card is good. I think this card is good. I'm actually pretty okay with this as the top end. Um, it kind of sucks being an artifact, but I, I, I think this is a, as in an artifact that can die to various like stray artifact removals yeah, that are just randomly green, yeah. on creatures in the set. Um, yeah, so, uh, but I think it's powerful. I think this is a powerful effect. I think this is a B minus for me. I think it's a B plus for me. Like you, you can actually like make it, you you get something right away, and you can uh, you get a three three a lot of times. Man, it's pretty I, good. I, I'm just so it's it's on par. For you, it's on par with Contagion Engine and Mind Slaver. Okay, I B think plus. that's fair. Actually, this is, amazing, to be. This is gonna be yeah. one of the better cards in the set. It's also colorless. Sword. Eh, okay. Of... Yeah, I'm pretty sold actually. Okay. Sword of Wealth and Power. For three, it's an equipment. Equipped creature gets plus two, plus two, and has protection from instants and sorceries. Very different. No color protection. And equip two. Good old protection, which means that you cannot play your tricks on it. Um, whenever a equipped creature deals combat damage to a player, create a treasure token. When you cast, when you next cast an instant or sorcery spell this turn, copy that spell. You may choose new targets for the copy. Okay, that's pretty good. Um, color protection is stronger for. It it can't be removed. <laughs> it's with with uh, unless it, they use enchantment. I don't think there is artifact removal. Eh, there is one, eh, which is bad. But it's gonna have protection and get a treasure token, get you some mana right away. Plus two, plus two for two is very powerful. Like just plus two, plus two equip for two is very powerful. Three is a lot to play, so it's five on the first one. And you may cast next instant or sorcery spell this turn. Copy the spell. That is that is pretty powerful. Not the first. Not maybe not on the first spell. All right. This is this is good. This is good. This is good. Now I'm gonna go with a B. Yeah, I'll go with B as well. Um, powerful. Uh, it does require you having creatures, and you know sometimes it's not gonna like attack your two two past opponents five five or whatever. But really powerful effect. It has weaker effects than other swords. I think basically every other sword, almost all swords, um, if you know them. Uh, but <laughs> there's so many swords. <laughs> I can't. I can't even check that statement. <laughs> there's so many swords. I mean, the swords of something and something give protection to two colors. Yeah. Torpor orb, two mana for an artifact. Creatures entering the battlefield uh, don't cause abilities to trigger F. Yeah. Not worth a full card. You're using a full card, opponent isn't. Transmutation font for five, it's an artifact. You can tap it to create your choice of blood token, clue token, or a food token. And for, for three and a tap, you sacrifice three artifact tokens with different names. Search your library for an artifact card, put it into the battlefield, and shuffle. Okay, activate only sorcery. All right, this last part doesn't do much in this set. So how good is it to make like food, blood, loot token every turn for five? And the turn that you played, you also make it. You paid five, and then you gotta pay two more for everything except the blood token. I mean, I think it's too much to pay. That's pretty good, like good choice. You can pay two mana to draw cards, one mana to loot. Basically always two to draw, but who knows. Food token to gain life, but you then you paid seven to gain three. Ah man, these cards are good when you don't have to expend extra mana. So you have to expend extra mana here, so it's a D minus. It's pretty damn bad, I think. I'll go. I'll go slightly, slightly more optimistic at a D. Uh, I think. I think the fact that if you are falling behind, right, or you need just a little bit of extra time to stabilize, having the option to make food is really nice I, I pretty much only see this as clue or food right like if, if you're somewhat stable you can clue if you're somewhat not stable you can food um, but it's so slow if you're not stable <laughs> so you slow. can't do this i think 
Uh, it's so slow. You cannot do um, this if you're not yeah. stable. It's, it's, I'm, I'm still giving it a D because I really, I, I think okay. it's, so, I think it's so cool. It's gonna be one of the worst, worst cards in the set. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't look very good. For more Evolt, land. Uh, Tap to add colorless and three and tap it to discard a card. Look at the top X cards of your library where X is the number of artifacts you control. Put one of those cards into your hand and the rest in the bottom of your library in a random order. Colorless is a super big cost for a land instead of a colored mana. That hurts a lot. Yep. And this doesn't give you card advantage. This filters and it's conditional on you having other artifacts. This is an F. I mean... It's a land that's for four man. I know you gotta discard a card, man. Yeah, you gotta discard a card. Yeah, I'm on a D minus. Like sometimes you're gonna have a good amount of treasures, so it's gonna be good. It's so much though. You gotta pay so much. I think it's gonna be sometimes playable. It's it's bad. It's just bad. Tarnation Vista is a land. Enters the battlefield tapped, and as it enters, you choose a color. For a tap, you add one mana of the chosen color. For one and a tap, for each color among monocolored permanents you control, add one mana of that color. So I mean. <laughs> the one and a tap is gonna add you like two mana, maybe three. So it's gonna be ramping you for one rarely. And it's just gonna be giving you nothing. Same mana. I mean it's it's a good card. It's like it's 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 this is the same card as the common, I think. Was it the common that we had? Where you choose oh, a common. It's worse than that. Why is it worse than that? Because it's not a desert. It's not a desert, but I mean, there's like two cards that care about deserts or something. I'm giving the same grade. What do you give that there? You gave it a C and I'll also give it a C. Yeah, C. Yep. And now we're on to the special guests. Just a couple of them. Uh, very well-known cards. So...